This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast, episode 477. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in uh, Pittsburgh, PA, in the Beachview neighborhood, right on the tracks, where everybody gets really confused when they're finding our place and they're like, oh God, I'm on tracks. I Hey, do you, I, I'm chill. I have this off, often. It's just like, hey, do you have any trouble getting up here? You know, because we're kind of like kind of tucked away here in town right mm-hmm. and then it's like yes i was good until either i had to go up this, the biggest hill i've ever seen or i'm on train tracks and got really confused you i'm sure you probably hear that a lot right chilla say that one way sorry you, you i'm responding did. to amanda now you're she's, she's responding to the chat room anyways john chill is with us he's a gadget guru gadget guru gadget guru at big bank international esquire how you doing sir Good. How are you? All right. Uh, so <laughs> we're talking. He was educating me before the show, um, before even our recording on on the the uh, the the vaping situation. <laughs> There's a lot happening in that world right now. So, uh, but anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. Please go check out everything at awesomecast.com, uh, where you can subscribe to the show and find fa- past episodes. Do a little searchy search for anything you want to hear us talking about. And of course, if you can subscribe to us on the YouTube, the uh, all the other places, the podcast, uh, wherever you do your podcast thing. Also on the Instagram, um, because apparently we can do this now, and as long as we keep the shows under an hour, um, we are posting the full episodes of our shows on Instagram. So we need like a clock on the wall. What do you mean we need a clock on the wall? To make sure that we hit the the, the 59 minute, 59 second I got a mark. clock right in front of me, sir. It's right at the top of the screen. There's and no just second like hand. Thing. There's a second hand. There's a Yeah, there's a second hand going Is on there? there. It's really tiny. It's, it's, you it's see really it really tiny. far from you. It's, 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 it's out there. It's out there. It's out there, man. Uh, you can also hit us up, awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast. And please follow the awesomecast Facebook page and group. Uh, Facebook page is where we do go live. We go live on a lot of different platforms, including the Periscope, Twitter, um, the YouTube page, uh, Twitch. But then um, we are also uh the we're having our conversations over on the facebook page so if you subscribe then and you can hang out with uh if amanda's out there steve brandon in, in kansas city uh though chilla that's you uh <laughs> partner uh, uh uh and everybody else hanging out there as well you can all you can do that uh live every tuesday at 7 p.m we're on there and if you catch us later on other or on other outlets uh please use hashtag ac477 uh, on Twitters to continue the conversation. Thank you to our audio partners, the 405media.com, still carrying us over there on their live stream daily at noon Eastern, and our friends at Post Industrial Audio, postindustrial.com, supporting some great pod- Pittsburgh podcasting. And thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesomecast at our coffee club love our friends matt weller john diggy DeGore, and john carmen and our fans of the show michael fedor katie's favorite fedor uh and longest running patreon supporter and our friends at pgh museums.org speaking of which our friend brian is in the neighborhood he's 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 actually he was just here a little is bit he, ago. is he right down here he's right turn? down yeah, he's well, okay don't give it full away but uh <laughs> Sorry, that's a. Uh, but uh, no, he's he is a in beach his, viewer. In his special lair. His special layer under 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 the tracks in Beachview <laughs> is the uh, PGH Museum Central. Uh, so, uh, but no, yeah, he's he's in the neighborhood. So uh, it's been it's been cool to watch his uh, his social media as he's kind of exploring the restaurants up here. Actually, so stuff I haven't gone to in years, and it's like right here. Uh, but <laughs> like, like like Harry Potter, he's at Fallow Field and three quarters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fallow Field and three quarters. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, everybody that's supporting us. You can too at patreon.com slash awesome cast. 
All right, let's get into our awesome things of the week. I want to get a fun one before we pour one out, okay? Okay. So this is one I saw. This is this is kind of, and I love the weird, goofy crap that happens at CES, okay? You don't get a lot of video games at CES either for the most part either. Well, they have a whole show they, they, for yeah, they have Yeah, they have their own thing, but it used to be. Hey, I remember the old, like the... Nintendo Power, first time I heard of CES was like 1987, 88, and they were showing stuff of them showing Nintendo games and some of the, some of the hardware uh, there. What TV channel did you watch that on? No, no, Nintendo Power Magazine, sir. Oh, in the po- Okay, yeah, in the magazine. The pictures. I'm like, what is this mysterious place called the Consumer Expo? Uh, electronics uh, se- se- show, whatever the hell it's called. CES. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, and, and and of course there was the toilet paper roll robot, which, did we talk about that last week? Or I don't did think I just, we did talk about that. I just that. heard it on every other podcast throughout the uh, throughout the week because they're the ones that Charmin did a little uh, uh, toilet paper robot that will bring you a toilet paper when you've forgotten it. That's important. But my that's, problem that's a is crucial. But somebody needs to. If you're forgetting the toilet paper, did you remember to load the toilet paper robot? But can't the robot like go I, pick I, it up? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> the video version two. The video I found had no information. But anyways. Um, so the big thing for me was NBA Jam. Literally, the big thing for me was NBA Jam. Uh, the One Up Arcade guys, where you can get those uh, tabletop or, or mini arcade units. They have the Ninja Turtles. Well, we talk about them like every other week on here because they're always releasing releasing cool stuff. Also, they got a Burger King one or Burger, Burger Time one. A <clears throat> uh, big fan of the Burger Time. But they had a 16 foot tall cabinet. For NBA Jam, here we go. They loaded it right up there. Um, it, it, so they're they're putting out an actual NBA Jam cabinet in their normal scale that they're doing for the one-up displays. But this was a giant. There's a picture here if you're with us on the video of them trying to play this with the giant buttons and a giant joystick. Uh, you had to go up on a scaffolding to kind of. Um, why is my iPad running so slow right now? <laughs> um, it's charging. But it, it's a mimic. It's a mimic version where it has NBA Jam, NBA Jam Tournament, and NBA Hang Time, uh, the sequels. So you can check that out over there, playing the full classic arcade version of NBA Jam. And look how you, big that is! Yeah, look at them. There, there's our, there's the reporters for scale. If you want to check that, <laughs> so <laughs> and those a, buttons are, are like are, the muffler. They're as big as my head. Yeah, they're they're insane. Yeah, the, the <laughs> muffler outside, the noisy muffler that was uh, plaguing our show a little bit earlier. Um, but uh, but no, that that's and I think they they were uh, gunning. I think I don't know if they got approved for the uh, Guinness World Record for the largest arcade machine. So, but uh, yeah, they're coming out with a lot, a lot of cool things. The other weird thing they had was uh, these these joysticks, where the the joysticks were um, just these big, probably like three or four foot tall joysticks with like a small base. Like you have to put your foot on something to kind of as a stabilizer. And it's like the old, you know, we have one here in the studio, like this joysticks that would have like a bunch of games on it. It's got twenty games on it, but it's like a giant like Pac Man. Or you know, a joystick. Is there or a button? Like, is there a button on the top of yeah, it? Yeah, I think like there's how? a button. I think uh. there's a button on the top of it. So it's like you know, Atari joystick kind of games. Um, but it's just like a giant set piece kind of thing. It's so goofy, but it, it it's kind of fun. But because um, you know, walk in and we're like, why do you have a giant joystick in your living room? Um, but uh, that's one up arcade. Uh, you know, they had a pretty. F- I, I watched a couple of videos of people just kind of looking at um, stuff in their booth from from CES. So that was kind of fun to follow uh, throughout the weekend, and 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 obviously got a lot of people's um, attention there too. Chilla. So, so I got to interrupt with something totally off topic. Oh no. Or it, it's kind of tech, but off topic. Topic. So if you know anything about me, sports is not my forte. What? Sports is not even like something I read about. Sorry. I just got a notification from Reddit, and it's suggested we think you'll be interest, interested in what they're posting in the NBA group. Like, as if we were just talking about NBA jams. Wait a minute. And I just got a notification. It's like, here's something that's suggested just for you. So this is one of those weird, like... Somebody's listening. Somebody's listening things, which I... and. I usually tell people, no, I don't think it's listening <laughs> to. is usually probably something else somewhere along the line. Is this a coincidence? I don't. That's a far-fetched coincidence. I don't know. Did you load the NBA Jam link over on your computer? No, it, it came up on my phone. It doesn't mean anything. It was something. No, like no I did not. It up. No, the only the closest I came to it was I have the Google Doc open. Hmm. Hmm. And I don't even know if I have. Hold on one second. Let's test this theory out. 
reddit.com. Oh, yeah, I do have auto sign in on Reddit at least. Okay. So you might be getting a cookie thing going on yeah. there, perhaps. Maybe. 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 So, um, pouring one out here. By the way, uh, uh, leading into your next topic, Amanda's saying, I just kept uh, lolling at who would keep their businesses on Windows 7 at this point. Chilla? Hopefully. Uh, well, you're going to upgrade your one. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm running <laughs> Windows 7 machines in my studio. Yes. But okay. um, I think the important thing to that, too, is, and I think there's like a, it wasn't New York Times. It was somebody. You can go download the Windows 10 installer, run through it on a Windows 7 machine, and it will do an in-place upgrade and not require a new key. Mm-hmm. So that is still open. Are you going to get the prompt like you could, like you used to in the olden days, where it would be constantly nag you to get Windows 10? To get yeah. Windows 10, but for right now, as of from what we know, it. 7 19 p.m january 14th 2020 the last standard time this is the last day no i don't think it's the last day i bet you they keep that okay i bet you they want people over but um yeah today's the last day for support for windows 7 um you need to upgrade to windows 10 oddly enough there was also a, a major exploit that came out um in the cryptographic key for installing software um so upgrade not don't only upgrade but also run your windows update today um because that is i mean the the nsa found the issue um and turned it over to microsoft instead of keeping it for themselves um which they have done in the past um which is how i think we got like the wanna cry virus and some of the other ones okay um but that being said my thing, my pick of the week is not something necessarily so technical, but it'll definitely keep you warm on those sad nights of running <laughs> Windows 7 upgrades to 10. Um, so, and I'm not, please forgive me, manufacturers, if I mispronounce this. It's the Tankula. 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 50 inch electronic or electric Jeez. fireplace. So you can you can buy this fireplace for a mere two hundred and thirty five dollars for the fifty inch model, as low as one eighty five ninety nine for this thirty six model, thirty six inch model. It is not it is available on Amazon, but it is not Prime shipped. Mm. That being said, I think I ordered mine on a Sunday and got it on Thursday. So we're not talking weeks; we're talking four days instead of three. Um, <clears throat> the thing that I really thought was cool about it is you can actually cut a hole in your wall and recess it back into the wall, or you can mount it right on your wall, which is what I did to start with. Mm-hmm. We're actually having discussions of, should we cut the wall apart and mount it <laughs> in there? Um, because of course you will. Because of course. Because after we heard about that, the, the hacksaw last week. Uh, yeah. So yeah, hacksaw not included in this one either. Oh, but, good. That <laughs> good to um, know. Good. To know. Nor is the uh, drywall cutting tools. But the as everything should have, it has a touch screen. Mm-hmm. Um, the touch screen allows you to set the different heat settings: uh, seven hundred fifty watt, fifteen hundred watt, or none, or p- p- pump no heat. Um, it comes with kind of plastic crystal looking things that go in the bottom of it. And you can change the flames to nine different colors, um, which is the super cool part. So if you, I think you were sliding through it there. If you go to the one that's like nine flame or color modes, mm-hmm. um, you can set the flames to any one of those colors. I wish you could set it where it would stay like five minutes on each one. It doesn't let you rotate through. But um, you can set also temperature. So it'll bring the room to a certain temperature and then kind of just shut the heater off. Um, and then it also has a timer. Super cool device, super easy to put up on your wall. Um, I actually used the stud finder that we talked about last week when I did the iMac wall mount to uh, find the actual screws and where they were in the drywall so I could guarantee there was a stud there. Um, it's it's not super light. It's definitely easier if you have two people to hang this on the wall, but one person can do it. Mm-hmm. Um a super fun device and i'm loving it in my basement and you're cozy 
And I'm cozy. Warm cozy and cozy. And warm. warm and cozy. Amanda's eyeballing this thing now. So, <laughs> 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 yeah. I, no, that that's fun. I, I mean, especially, I mean, who wants to deal with the, um, I mean, I, I kind of, I grew up with a fireplace. Um, you know, a, a lot of wood um, um, heated home growing up so i do miss the uh the the, the fire smoke kind of smell to that's it the i do miss bit. that so we actually so so now <laughs> well, well, can we fake it so is oh, there you something can fake, <laughs> you can fake it till you make it um so what we do you so fake i until you make a fire i grew up i grew up with the fireplace as well hauling in wood mm-hmm. getting the little tinder box out um so what we actually do is we have like the oh what's the brand yankee candle Mm-hmm. They'll do like a campfire. They have campfire scented candles. Of course they do. And stuff like that. So of course. Yep. You 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 can not only get like a ninja turtle green and orange flame on your electric fireplace, you can then light up the candles and get the smell too. <laughs> it's a process, but it's it still is. better than maintaining wood and 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 doing Well, it's with not that. so we we have two fireplaces in our home and both mm-hmm. of them are actually drywalled in they're behind the drywall mm-hmm. um and the cost of making them fully operational would be rather expensive yeah we we have kind of a de- uh, looks like a decommissioned fireplace in our home and it's just like i'd rather just put something like this in there mm-hmm. you know and, and just like return to that but i know some people that have gone so i know people that have gone the gas route mm-hmm. i know people that have gone the biofuel route really so biofuel is like a you buy an insert, and they may even make coffee tables with like inserts in them. You buy an insert, and then it takes this liquid gel, which is odorless, smokeless. They claim it to be okay for your health. Mm-hmm. You pour the liquid in there, light the liquid on fire, and let it burn. <laughs> Jeez. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um yeah, I know people that have gone the gas insert, the biofuel, the electric insert. Um there's a number of ways to bring the uh fireplace into your home. There's even one of these models that I saw that you it actually has like legs that you can put on it where you can just put it in the corner of a room and call it a day. <laughs> on right on the floor. Just so. throw it up. There you go. Yep. Awesome. Uh, well, uh, aside from that, we got plenty more awesome things to talk about, uh, including what you guys have put out there uh, in the uh, Awesome Cast group. But in the meantime, I want to give a shout out to our good friends up the street at Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza in Beachview, Carnegie, PA, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, please go support those guys who have been supporting us here on the Awesome Cast for so very long. It's such good pizza and, and, and pizza pepperoni rolls and, and, and salads and, and, and all kinds of fun stuff. They're artists of the pizza making variety. Go check them out at sliceonbroadway.com. All right, let's take a peek through what you guys have been submitting through the week, um, including Riz was really getting video gamed out this week and probably a lot of announcements around CES applying to that too. Oh, no. Oh, no. Are we back? Are we here? There we go. I think we froze for a second. So uh, hopefully we keep going. Uh, so we'll shut down some extra stuff. Uh, scared me for a moment. Uh, but anyways, um, so there's this Nintendo World coming to Universal Studios uh, Japan, I believe. Korea? Shanghai? Where is that? Osaka, Japan will open this summer. Super Mario World. Uh, according to, there's a new trailer. Uh, it's a Universal Studios park that they have out there. Um, but uh, it, it doesn't really tell me a whole lot because it's all uh, kind of CG kind of stuff. I, I don't know. Uh, Chilla, are you excited for a uh, – and I think this might be coming potentially also to the American Universal Studios, uh, right? I'm guessing, I'm guessing just like anything, it'll start there and then mm-hmm. come over to here pending how it does. And, and I think this gives them a – first place to go with it and then they can modify it as they bring it to their other parks i'm excited about this as someone that grew up with nintendo they kind of showed the bands Mm -hmm. how disney has their their bands they they call them the power up band it's a mario kart ride from the from the trailer it looks like um and uh, of course there's been a little kind of 
unofficial Mario Kart rides. I know I was getting the secret emails from when they were supposedly in Pittsburgh not too long ago. So uh, this is going to open ahead of the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. So there you go. A lot of uh, a lot of people visiting there are going to probably want to go check this out, right? Wonder if there'll be a, a Switch game to to go along with it. <laughs> well, yeah, they always do that Olympic game, game, like Mario and Sonic or something, mm-hmm. right? You think they'll go and keep doing that? Maybe. I mean, why not? It's so weird that that's a thing. It's so strange. Come to the park, get a game cartridge. Yeah, go to the Olympics. There you go. You, know, you do, still do the thing where you can like go to a place and it'll download a demo or something. Like I remember, you used to be able to take like your Nintendo DS or something into Walmart and download demos. Is that a th- is that, that's uh, still a thing? So Chachi's saying Japan, Orlando, and Singapore. They're all getting them. They're all getting them. Nice. Got to collect them all. Got to collect them all. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else Riz has over here. Um, there was a modder, and I saw this going around, and this is, I, I, I didn't realize this was a mod. I thought it was an actual, of course, of course this isn't an actual thing that they released. Somebody made a GameCube-style Joy-Con, a uh, pair of Joy-Cons for the Switch. So, I'm um, of course, if you're playing Smash Brothers, that's kind of your go-to, uh, is, is that, uh, and they even uh, re- released another game, GameCube controller for the Switch that you can purchase, uh, but this guy just said, hey, let's just split it up and make it a Joy-Con. And it fits right there on your Switch so you can play mobile there. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, what do you think of that as a Switch owner? I think that's super cool. In fact, I've looked at you know, how you can do different things to use your Xbox controller or use your PlayStation controller. Oh, really? Yeah. There's, uh, what is it, 8-Bit Do. I think is like a little USB device that you have to have the, I think you have to have it docked, Mm -hmm. but you can use a number of other controllers with your switch. And these would be corded controllers though, right? No, No. this is a, like a thing that lets you use an, uh, a wireless Xbox controller. Okay. Um, so I think it's super interesting. In fact, they do sell the original eight bit Nintendo controllers. They don't slide on like the joy cons, but Mm -hmm. it's a, it's I think they're and they're wireless and something to go along with the, the the you know I mean we have Nintendo games we have Super Nintendo games let's get a controller that kind of still feels like the original right yep uh, so. yeah I think this makes complete sense I was a little sad so I don't know if you see me pop on the Nintendo Switch every once in a while like I don't know how much you see like your friends on there I but I'll be honest with you I haven't seen you I've seen Mad Mike on occasion yeah I've seen my brother I, well now. it's always on on the holidays I, I I pick up my brothers and remember I have an account that's still on his his and I log into it and play some games I was sad that it wouldn't let me play the Nintendo and Super Nintendo games without with without purchasing the online unfortunately so but the online's like twenty bucks a I mean it's yes super but I don't cheap. own my own Switch to buy it <laughs> so. Uh, but you know, I wanted to play it under my stuff, so I'm not messing with the save games or anything like that. So, I don't know. That's pretty cool. This is by um, Shank is the uh, modder. I feel like I've heard that name before. I'm sure he's come up in news a, a few times for uh, Nintendo mods, and they're showing some other stuff in there. It looks like that he's worked on, uh, including maybe the uh, Nintendo NES controllers. Uh, Riz also shared, he has a question for you, and I think this is more for you because I, I think you've had more experience with these. Uh, so, LG has um, a TV with a push of a button that will morph from a regular TV to a curved display. Okay? That's kind of cool. So he kind of wants to know, what is the deal with curved displays? Why are they kind of an important thing? Like, why why is that, like, the trend going on? I, I got to say, I don't see them a lot in Best Buy. It's interesting because, like, Costco always has at least one. Really? Like, they always have one curved TV, and they always have... Like, they ran a really good deal on a curved computer monitor. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't, like, a small computer monitor. It was, like, a 32-inch yeah. computer monitor. I don't know what the thing is. Like, I think... I swear Kraus has one. Mm-hmm. We need to ask now, him... I've seen the super widescreen ones. Uh, somebody at work hard has one of those. Where it's just, like... It's just, like... That, insanely wide one but he does he does a uh, audio editing so there's all your timelines right uh so that makes sense i could see it so i could see it i could see it more for the computer than like the the viewing angle gets odd on that type of device i could see it from the computer monitor because the computer monitor is typically meant for one person to be looking at it mm-hmm. or at max 
like someone looking over someone's shoulder. But from a TV perspective, is it so I can say I have a bigger TV, but I don't have the space to have it? <laughs> yeah, so, like it, it's like a big TV in a little room, maybe. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I think it's supposed to like, you know, that wraparound experience probably is good when it's like just you. But with on a TV, monitor. it's not like you're pushing up. So you're two, three feet from the display. Yes. Where I feel like the computer monitor, you're much closer. Hmm. So the. Like you're, so it wraps around you're, you. Yeah. You're potentially getting the peripheral. I, it probably depends on your setup. I, I don't know. I don't know what the recommendation is or for Or is that. it so it goes in a corner? But I don't know. I mean, I, or is it nothing more than just a... Sh- look, my TV's curved. Oh, look at that. You know. Curved I, for your pleasure? Curved for your television watching pleasure. Uh, and Potter shared, uh, apparently the Subaru um, it ha- uh, <laughs> released a Forrester Ultimate Customized Kit. Special edition. Do you, do you have the picture of the floor in front of the uh, car? I do have it right there. And you see that. That that makes me giggle. It, 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 it's, yeah, that, that uh, <laughs> abbreviation's a little bit problematic. The Forrester Ultimate Customized Kit Special Edition. Take off edition. Like, they did not capitalize edition. I want to point that out right now. Yeah, they knew what they were doing the, in the marketing. Somebody somewhere was like, can we slip this in? And they did. And, and it looks like a Disney Cars car. It like, does. It's like short, like it's like it's like compacted in length, but mm. then seems higher than like it's one of the like drifter cars from Disney Cars, minus the eyeballs and mouth on the front. Um, apparently, there's an update to this article. Subaru of America reportedly found it necessary to disavow itself from. <laughs> This product that was displayed at the Singapore uh, Motor Show, according to the drive, the automaker, and this is from um, autoblog.com. Was it an error in translation? Uh, apparently, uh, it, it uh, sent a letter to its American dealership network to explain that it had nothing, quote, nothing, had nothing to do with this, and, quote, it obviously goes without saying that this car will not be available in the United States market. Or you could rename it. Yeah. I... Jeez. All right, there you go. Singapore gives no Forrester Ultimates. <laughs> Thank you, Dave Potter, um, uh, for uh, sharing that around. Um, I want the super. <laughs> that has got to be turned into our our thing. Hey, we do a lot of stuff around here. Sidekick Media Services is our entity that we talk that we we uh, uh, do a lot of work with our businesses. Uh, our friends make podcasts for people, uh, um, uh, make, make some uh, uh, really cool videos, music videos, um, video productions, live streaming, conferences. We've done a lot over the years. Go check out what we've been doing at SidekickMediaServices.com, and we can help be a sidekick to your superhero project. What big thing can we help you with? Go check out more, SidekickMediaServices.com. Missy, I have, Missy and I have been working diligently with our crews shooting some awesome videos across uh, across Western PA. And, and very soon we'll be traveling again and uh, doing some very really cool, fun stuff all across the country, uh, especially with uh, with uh, the CDS and the Baja and the Aero Design and uh, maybe some extra stuff that we have in the works as well. So keep an eye out for that. And follow us on – we're on LinkedIn too. And uh, we share a lot of stuff for some behind-the-scenes of our projects over on there and the Twitter and the Facebook page. So... Hey, I parked next to a Tesla today. It did not talk to me. <laughs> it's just it didn't say of, hi, sir. Like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> like, what's up? You parked a little close, buddy. <laughs> so, but um, it, there is apparently a, a story that was coming out from last week that uh, Tesla cars will soon talk to production p- pedestrians. And let me see if I can pull up. Uh, oh, oh, there's another uh, video working somewhere in the background here, and we'll get that out of the way. And uh, but uh, there was um, there was a uh, a video of it where let me pull that up. Well, don't just stand there staring. Hop in. <laughs> well, don't just stand there staring. Hop in. It's like Knight Rider. It's like a yeah. It's like it's like a Monty Python Knight Rider kind of situation. So um, I guess this is supposed to be. Uh, Elon Musk teased the plans to let them uh, the cars talk to to uh, um, pedestrians through external speakers, 
presumably the ones added to comply with the sound requirements. You know, what we talked about there being like kind of the, 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 there's no motor sounds in an electric car. So we need to add speakers so that there's some sound to help pedestrians know it's there. Um, so apparently he hinted that she'll get a fart in the general direction Monty Python style potentially <laughs> as a, as a solution to this. And, uh, this was something that they were showing off. Was this a CES thing? Perhaps it had to have been. Um, but, uh, there was a little bit of that. And this, oh, this is actually, uh, Elon Musk actually, uh, shared that video. So there you go. I, I think we could program it. Like, can we just like, like in New York city, is it just going to be a, Hey, get out of the way, pal. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing, and I'm wondering when when it becomes like voice command driven. Because like, can you imagine like one of those cars driving down the street and someone yelling whatever their keyword is, "Turn left now!" And <laughs> it, it turns into an Amazon <laughs> Echo situation. Yeah, <laughs> kind of on top of that. Ooh, that'd be a little. That'd be a little dangerous. Um, it would be interesting if the cars talked to each other as they passed by. Oh. One another. Hello, hello, <laughs> hello, hello, doctor, doctor, Tesla, Tesla, hello. Um, and then they get really angry when another another electric car goes by, right? <laughs> of a different, like a Ford or something. Uh, speaking of Tesla, actually, our friends at the uh, Literate Juggalo, uh, our friend uh, that I get to hang out with when I go to the gathering out there, uh, out in Ohio, uh, they shared a tweet from the Insane Clown Posse which is not a name that we usually hear on this podcast. Uh, as you know, Elon Musk is down with the clown. Uh, what you may not know, Psychopathic Records is down with saving the planet, reducing emissions, and uh, they are down with T- Tesla and uh, one of their artists, Ouija Mac, released a the first underground car commercial <laughs> uh, as part of it. I'm not going to turn on turn up the uh, sound on it, because, uh, maybe a little bit give you a little bit there and uh yeah it looks like uh they're at tesla charge stations doing a rap video somewhere somewhere warm with palm trees though and that will get us taken down off of youtube for sure yep there it goes there it goes we'll have to bleep that later perhaps uh anyways but i thought that was kind of a cool this is kind of I, I, I guess uh, uh, a signal that maybe uh, the electric cars are getting a little more, well, underground. I don't know about mainstream. You'd certainly see them everywhere now. A little more sophisticated. A little more sophisticated. I don't know about that with that video, but still. Um, Chilla, what else did you have from this past week? So do you remember, and it was ages ago, we talked about kiosks on the cheap and we were talking about like reusing an old iPhone or an Apple TV or for a kiosk, like for a yeah, like putting it in someone's. You were, I think, it was in a doctor's office or something. Oh, this, uh, this, this and how one. how you could like put up. Remember the old Flickr stream that mm-hmm. you could add to your devices. Yeah, it would, and then kind of add to the Flickr stream, and it would change the rotation. It, of, is this like how I I had a slideshow going in yes. the doctor's office I used to work at? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. I was like, and we were talking about different ways to do that mm-hmm. with different stuff. Well, it was interesting because there was an article that I read on Nine to Five Mac around enterprise kiosk technology and how far it's come, mm-hmm. and whether you want to use an Apple TV and, and get into some of the device management stuff that you can do with that or even use something like a Fire TV. And they had recommended two different um, enterprise-grade apps. One was KitCast, which runs on Fire TV, Apple TV, and Android TV. Okay. Um, and you can try these for free. They, they do come at a cost, whether they're monthly, yearly, whatever. Um but they actually kind of give you like a power editor and they run on an app on that device. Um, And then you can go in at any time and change and you can have templates already built out. You can have social media feeds. Mm -hmm. Um, It can be static content to to limit on, you know, how much data it's pulling Mm. over the internet. Um, KitCast definitely looked had at, at a glance, um, had the most feature functionality. And I was surprised to see some of the names of the companies that are using these. Allstate, Wyndham, um, Fender, Marriott, 
Um, there were there were a couple other major corporations using the KitCast. So I, you've probably seen somebody using this. Yeah, you've yeah. I'm like I'm wondering like who does McDonald's use for like their menu, mm-hmm. like that back end menu thing. Yeah, if you've, you've seen <clears> the video <throat> screen menu uh, at, at some of the McDonald's, as, and, and it was, which has always seemed really nice to me. Nike, Penn State. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, there, there's not just it, it's not some small shop down the road, right? Mm-hmm. Um, then the other one, so that's kitcast.tv. K-I-T, yep. cast with a C, dot TV. And then there was the other one was Carousel Digital Signage, which is car- carouselsignage.com. Mm-hmm. Um, they have, like, they integrate with a number of different things. One of their primary use cases is Apple TV. Um but they have zero touch deployment. They have a bunch of integration. You can do emergency messaging. Um, so it's interesting to, you know, something that we were trying to, to put together some different ways of doing this, but also managing it remotely, managing, could you imagine managing a large fleet of these types of devices at mm-hmm. like a college campus or something like that? I thought it was pretty cool. And, while it's while they're not free, like the carousel is twenty bucks per player per month. Right, and I saw the twenty. Uh, they started at about twenty four dollars per month per screen on the Kick Kickcast. Mm-hmm. So it was it was definitely interesting. I think the nine to five Mac had some, you know, lower end, keep it free type ways of doing it with mm-hmm. things like, well, just use your iCloud Photo Stream and go in there and edit it, and it's just going to run through whatever pictures is the screensaver. Um, there's, there's a bunch, there's a handful of different ways to do it, but I thought, it, I thought it was just a pretty cool thing. Um, pretty cool technology. That's come a long way since mm-hmm. we were trying to do this in the past. That's nice. Yeah. It's definitely something like I, if I knew this existed, I would have recommended this to my client at the time, uh, which I, I don't which think I'm they, they were, they probably they were there yet. back then. Yeah. No, they weren't there yet. And, and I mean, even, even some groups I know, and even what we do here in the front window, I mean, we're using Google Slides, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that's it. So, I mean, um, no, that's really cool. So go check those out. We'll have links in the uh, show notes as well uh, for those. Let's see. What else was going on this past week, this crazy week with uh, CES and everything? Uh, let's see. Uh, I like this. You know, I'm always keeping an eye out for what's the latest in, like, especially VR glasses. Panasonic had a con- This is a concept. Again, we're going to see a lot of kind of skeptical maybe this will work kind of stuff <laughs> out of ces and when it was a uh, uh, panasonic had a vr glasses uh in hdr and they were they look like a steampunk glasses kind of thing it reminded me of morpheus from the like it would be something from the matrix it, yeah maybe a little bit maybe a little bit um so i, I don't know that was kind of a cool thing so so we can check out the, that visual there if you're on video or, or check out the link in our show notes uh, you know, they're definitely uh, ideally a little less form factor. I can't imagine these being like Oculus Rift type of glasses. Um, maybe to start off with, like maybe this is what your like Oculus Quest is going to turn into or is this kind of form factor. But uh, in the meantime, you know, I guess, you know, we'll, we'll step up from there. Right. Um, there was and then also uh, we talked about the robot that brings you toilet paper. Uh, but how about uh, this is one that Samsung put out. Uh, it is a pair of robot arms that will uh, uh, make you food, including it was making a salad. Uh, the one fellow, the one fellow was like, uh, here on the Engadget was like, yeah, I didn't eat. <laughs> yes. uh, apparently it's all food trucks and it's really busy. Um, but yeah, this thing will make your food and, uh, uh, you know, two independent robot arms um, that will uh, help you hopefully in the kitchen. Uh, I'm sure this is also mostly a concept thing as well. But back to the VR, even like the Oculus Quest, they're still back ordered. Really? Oh, you can't get an Oculus Quest. Like the, I just looked it up. Earliest from Amazon, deli- Amazon delivered. I don't. It doesn't even have a date for the for the 128 gig and the 64 gig was. Well, it'll be in stock on January 27th. <laughs> like I think that and that was a big Christmas. Like I think that's back. It was. It's been back ordered for ages. Interesting, interesting. Um, but uh, I w- but anyways, the, the robot arms. <laughs> I see these popping up next time I go to a Samsung store in New York City. I bet they have the robot arms. 
Like just showing it off, right? You've been to those Samsung Experience stores, right? I haven't been to the Samsung Experience. Really? No. Oh, you need I've to see to that Microsoft one. the Microsoft Experience Center. Okay. Not the Samsung the, yes. Experience store. But, but that, that, that's, and I don't know if the Experience is what they call it, but I've seen those in, there's the one in New York City that's right by where Google has their headquarters up there. That's You went there when you got your glass. No, I went there. Oh. Well, I went there when I got my glass, but we went back with Chachi, his bachelor party weekend. Ah. And we hung because we were going to the candy, like the part where they make the the um, uh, drinks with the candy and, and milkshakes and, and and everything down down the block from it. So we're, we found that place and it had like a giant, you know, two story wall and, 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 you know, showing off fridges and and what you can do with the VR and everything. Right. Um, and then there was another one in Hollywood in the right down from the Chinese theater. They had like a installation. That you can walk into that that was kind of a small version of those experiences too, so um, I want one of those refrigerators so bad. <laughs> one with the camera inside that. Um, the, so they have the one. It has the camera inside and it has Android running on the outside, mm-hmm. and you can like do you, Android things. You can do like I can see my video doorbell from my refrigerator door. Mm-hmm. I can play Apple TV. I well, I don't know. I could do movies anywhere at least. You can do. Pretty much anything you can do on an Android, but what what's really nice, I think, is there's an app integration where you can kind of use it as a chalkboard and write what you write your to do list or your, your shopping list, and then what we actually do is we have a whiteboard on the side of our refrigerator, mm-hmm. and it's like you're going to the store. Okay, take a picture of the whiteboard, and then as you walk through the store, look at your picture on your phone. Now I could just. I don't have to even take a picture. It's just always there. It's just there. That's awesome. And they they do cross platform. So even though it's Samsung and Android, Samsung has an iOS app, and then obviously Smarter Things integration. I don't know what that was. Um, <clears throat> I don't think anything hit anything. Yeah, it, it, there's just there's just noises happening from the noises. TV or something. Um, but they have Smarter Things integration because they own Smarter Things. So definitely a lot of fun to be had, and they have the the one that's the two doors on top for the refrigerator and two doors on bottom for the freezer, and you can convert the freezer into extra refrigerator space. Mm-hmm. Uh, super cool devices that um, I can't afford. So other automated things. Uh, the Verge had a ride in the driverless Waymo. There it is going. They're, 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 I love they, they they very exclusively made everybody sit in the back seat. <laughs> Even the belt the belt is buckled in on the driver's side. So, so it wouldn't ding. Well, you probably, probably so it wouldn't ding because uh, that's probably an automatic thing. And uh, and they're all like everybody's like huddled in the back of this 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 small sedan and <laughs> just reacting to this thing. Um, did, they, did they clear the roadways for this? voyage no i don't think so this you is, see people on the is, other side of the street that, yeah but but i mean this is in arizona where where this is and you see other traffic in front of them oh, too look at them yep. go and there's construct there's active construction uh they talked about that and how it dealt with that um there's other waymo cars and you see people waving at you i believe this is in arizona where where they are doing this like you can say hey i want to get a waymo and go to walmart you know they're very select. Last I heard, they're very select locations, but it is like I need to go to Walmart, call up a Waymo, hop in the car, go shop, and it'll bring you back. So I mean, and and it's using an app and everything. I just showed an app real quick there, and there's like a display that kind of shows in there and everything. So um, it's a <laughs> there's a button to pull over, start the ride. Uh, so this is the next thing I get. <laughs> so. Um, I guess it's more of a minivan, isn't it? It's kind of like a small minivan, I guess. So, um, yeah, it, so this is, this is, this is where Waymo is going, uh, which is a Google alphabet, uh, property. I know I've seen these guys. So, uh, Hey, I'm going to Arizona. I'm going to be, uh, looking out for some Waymos, uh, when I have head out there in the, uh, end of April here. So, um, here's hoping. So there's that. Hey, what's going on with, um, I, uh, Google allows iOS, to do two-factor authentication? Was that right? Yeah, I thought that was a... Yeah. Um, give me one second to bring up the article. So you're familiar with... There's like the Authenticator app from Microsoft. Mm-hmm. There mm-hmm. is and I can't, the Smart Lock app from Google. Um, in the iOS app, you can now set up your phone to be the second factor key. Okay. So, um, I think it goes over Bluetooth. And they're claiming they're using the same technology apple does 
with the with your biometric information, whether it be your fingerprint or your um, facial recognition information, it goes into that secure enclave. So it's secured on the device. It can't be rep can't be back up and backed up and replicated across devices. Mm-hmm. If you want to put it on a second device, you have to set it up there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, hmm. It's much like the physical USB C or Lightning keys that we've seen, but it goes right into the app. So I thought it was pretty cool um and and to me the more frictionless we can make two-factor authentication while not being exploitable Mm -hmm. um i feel like more people will use it and for me like i have one of those security tokens for work um i know other people that have like the little plug-in usb fob Mm -hmm. where you plug it in and it, it like during your login for work you like type in your user id password then it says okay provide your additional factor and you plug in this key and you hit a button on it mm-hmm. into your usb port um like i'm like never gonna that, so here's the thing that seems like a lot it's not only is it a lot but i'm not gonna necessarily notice over a weekend if i lose that thing mm-hmm. unless what I'm is actively the, working. What is the first thing we see in every <laughs> spy movie that they steal is that fob or that that right. uh, like, uh, 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 tag or, or something like that. Like you got to get the key card, right? You take my phone, I'm virtually going to know instantly. Mm-hmm. Unless you steal it off my nightstand while I'm sleeping, it will till I wait. It will be till I wake up that I realize my phone's gone. But like that's the one thing that I feel like. I'm going to know if it's gone. I'm going to report it missing. I'm going to try to track it down on whatever find my service you have, whether it's Android, Google, Microsoft, Apple, whatever. Like, and then if I feel like I'm not going to be able to get it back, it's getting the the customer lock, and mm. it's going to be a brick. I, I don't know. I feel like this is the this is the way to go from a future state perspective so wait a minute so I'm, I'm pulling up i'm pulling up this thing uh do i need a physical key to go along with this because it's asking me do you have your key with you i didn't i think it depends on what service or you do i use pick something with? else google prompt text message hmm we'll check that later <laughs> so. yeah like i you don't have another key do you no okay no, I thought you could set this up as your primary. But it, but it, it, it's an additional one if you already have one of those. No, I don't right? think you need. I don't think so. Hmm. No, it's your phone plus your device. Add your plus building your, security key. Okay. Your credentials. Okay, I'm afraid to do this um, half half paying attention and lock myself out of my account because I've and seen never other, get back and in never get again. back in because I've seen other podcasts do that before. You can, I'm sure you could call Google and explain what happened. I don't know if that worked for them. <laughs> like oh. other than the fact that Google people listen to their podcast and I think somebody finally helped them. But knowing how long it took to get my uh, AdSense suite straight after all these years, like trust me, my AdSense was a problem for like 10 years and I couldn't like I had things that could make money on, on Google but I couldn't get paid <laughs> was the longest running thing. So, and there was nobody to talk to. It just nothing would log in and connect. So anyways, we're not going to play that game, I guess. So, um, all right. So what else we got here? Are we, are we up? We're, we're still You're well under seven minutes. We're still under uh, my 48 recorded. Uh, uh, we're still well under our Instagram limit that we've been trying to hit. <laughs> so, and I actually am out of stories here uh from uh the week i believe and uh, we'll let katie explain this one when she comes back next week there's a there's a sports puck ball game of some sort happening tonight so um we got a lot of stuff coming up uh, of course uh, wrestling man show still doing a lot of great shows uh we're gonna have a return uh, that's recording this week um the broadcast is coming back some great interviews that they've been having um but we're recording um this this week i don't want to reveal the guest yet until we've had her. I'm in. glad I didn't say I, what you told I me earlier. I, say, I told you the guest was. I think it's pretty. It's pretty a Pittsburgh, a big Pittsburgh guest. 
is going to be here in the studio on Thursday for that recording. And, of course, more recordings coming up for um, some great episodes for the Fishing Without Bay podcast. We actually have a great interview um, that we're, we're rolling out throughout the month here with our friend Andrew DiNardo, who I know as the, the sign guy of local independent wrestling. Uh, that I always make sure we get a shot <laughs> of every show. Um, and uh, he, he uh, is talking about his story of losing uh, 200 pounds. Uh, with he had gastric sur- bypass surgery, but also, I mean, did a lot of lifestyle change and everything in, in, in dealing with that as well. Uh, so it's a really great story. Uh, uh, part two of, I believe, is going to be four parts. It just came out this morning as of this recording. Uh, go over to fishingwithoutbait.com. And, of course, our friends, I know I saw our friends over at Bardic Mystery Tours today. They, they posted their show a little late on Monday, and we'll get that in the rotation as well. Our friends at Thrifty Podcast and, of course, Bolt Sports. Go check out all the great podcasts on the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. And there's at least one new show in the works um, that you guys can uh, keep an eye out for. Uh, it's going to be a, a little different than what we've been doing in the past, um, but for a very good reason. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, look for uh, release information for that as well. And, of course, all the other great stuff. Also, hey, new podcast came up with uh, the Auto Drive Challenge that I've been working with, the uh, the automated cars. Um, the TRC um, Transport Research Center out in East Liberty, Ohio, where we'll be for year three of Auto Drive Challenge um, and talking with them because they test a lot of stuff, a lot of new technologies and have for 30 years out there. And they got a cool website with a virtual tour. So if you want to check out some of that test track kind of stuff, if you're into cars, into automation, um, that might be worth a chat or w- worth, a lis- worth a listen. Uh, go look up Level 4, um, the Auto Drive Challenge podcast on your iTunes or wherever you get podcasts. Chilla! That's my name. Hi. Hi. Shut up, everybody. Let us for And a good second. evening. Hello, and good evening, and good night. Chilla, you're at Chilla on the Twitter. John's Chilla on the Facebook, ChillaTech.net, Chilla Photo, I think, on the Instagram. And that's all. The Are we ones. getting Minecraft server updates on your uh, social media? I should do that. You should do that. <clears throat> if anyone knows about how to apply mods and good mods to apply to Bedrock Edition, hit me up on the tweeters. Getting hardcore over here. Because I need I need some my video game some ideas. My video game update is is watching Missy Buddha Witcher three for the first time. So that was fun, and actually installing some of the discs that I've had that came with my Xbox that I never played, uh, including Witcher three. So hopefully I'll actually play them in sometime in the future. Anyways, guys, thank you so much at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Check out all the podcasts. Check out if you are here live. We'll be uh, we'll right back with Wrestling Mayhem show over on that Facebook page. Because this podcast night here in Pittsburgh. Uh, thank you, producer Missy. Thank you guys out there. We'll see you guys next time. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.